Good morning. My name is Tihana Bicinic. I'm a reader and consultant in infectious diseases at St. George's University of London. And this short talk is going to be about cryptococcal immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, or IRIS, as it's known for short, cryptococcal IRIS. So this talk will cover an understanding of what IRIS is and its definitions to um, be aware of the predictors of cryptococcal iris, the different clinical manifestations, and the management and prevention of cryptococcal iris. So iris occurs usually in the context of immunosuppression, usually in patients with advanced HIV, who are started on immune restoring therapy, in this case, antiretroviral therapy. And this leads to a rapid reversal of this profound immunodeficiency, which leads to a restoration of the immune responses against, in this case, the fungus cryptococcus. And in a small proportion of cases, these immune responses are aberrant or exaggerated and produce this inflammatory reaction. And the reaction can occur to cryptococcus yeasts that are either alive, in other words, they haven't been properly sterilized by antifungal therapy, or they're dead in the brain or in the spinal fluid. And this can lead to two clinical scenarios. As Professor Harrison alluded to in his talk on treatment, the first is one of unmasking iris. That is when the infection, which as we have already heard, is, can be either subclinical or latent in these patients with advanced HIV, is then unmasked by the restoration of the inflammatory response to this pathogen that's so far been dormant in the body, and the symptoms develop usually of headache or other symptoms of meningitis, and it presents with positive cultures. The second scenario is one of so-called paradoxical iris, and this is in patients who have previously been treated for a, an episode of cryptococcal meningitis, showing both signs of clinical resolution of symptoms, as well as response to therapy by lowering of the fungal burden or even sterile CSF. And yet, the actual symptoms recur, usually after a few months following the start of antiretroviral therapy. Uh, paradoxical iris has been estimated to have an incidence ranging between 6 and 45% in HIV-infected cohorts and usually occurs on average around one month after the start of antiretroviral therapy. Iris can also occur to cryptococcus in solid organ transplant recipients at a time when maybe their immunosuppressive drugs are either lowered or stopped for various reasons and occurs in up to 11% of cases. The acute mortality can range up to 36% in reported series. However, if you are aware of this complication and you manage it appropriately, in most cases, patients should survive. Usually, it presents with very similar symptoms that cannot really be distinguished from the original episode of cryptococcal meningitis. Headache, neck stiffness, maybe photophobia, and also sometimes new onset seizures after the start of antiretroviral therapy. Usually uh, on lumbar punctures, the CSF shows inflammation. This is in contrast to patients with advanced HIV not on antiretrovirals, where often the white cell count is zero. The protein uh, is often raised, and the glucose can be reduced. And in the case of paradoxical iris, uh, fungal cultures where they're available are sterile, Whereas in unmasking iris, the first presentation is usually, uh, is always positive cultures. Iris can occur also outside the central nervous system and can present either with new respiratory symptoms and a pneumonitis on chest x-ray or CT scan. It can also present as swollen lymph nodes, lymphadenitis. Um, often this can be as pictured in this CT scan here, mediastinal lymph nodes, that is the lymph nodes that previously uh, were containing the cryptococcus that was inhaled into the lungs, can become inflamed and can be seen on the CT scan. And then rarely there can be a manifestation of disease in other organs. Iris is a difficult diagnosis and essentially is a diagnosis of exclusion. 
uh, usually some of the criteria that should be present should be a new appearance or worsening or recurrence of clinical or radiological manifestations of, in most cases, a meningitis. So, in other words, a recurrence of a headache and radiographic manifestations, so CT scans showing maybe meningeal enhancement or new lesions in the brain, new cryptococcomas, and consistent with an inflammatory process. Histopathology biopsies where they're available, in most cases these might be if uh, a, a lymph node is involved, will show this classical granulomatous lesion, so this lesion with macrophages and T cells walling off the infection. And these symptoms usually occur in the case of paradoxical iris during, in a patient who's actually adherent to fluconazole therapy. So it's not a case of relapse um, where they haven't been taking their therapy. These patients are taking their antiretrovirals and their fluconazole. And also, importantly, they've had a spinal fluid and uh, tests for other opportunistic infections or other causes of meningitis that could be responsible for this presentation. And fourthly, in the case of paradoxical iris, CSF cultures are usually negative and biomarkers such as cryptococcal antigen tests are either stable or slightly reduced compared to the initial uh, diagnosis. Just a reminder that in the case of unmasking iris, this, the cultures will be positive. The predictors of whether a patient, before they start on antiretroviral therapy, is likely to develop iris, is having a high fungal or antigen load. That is, at the start of therapy, they've got a high fungal burden, and also, having been on a therapy that's failed to clear their fungus, they have residual fungus left at the start of antiretroviral therapy. This can be measured either using cryptococcal antigen titers or uh, the presence of positive fungal blood cultures and also culture where available. And all this um, leads to a risk of developing iris. Host immune factors are important, so patients who mount a poor inflammatory response, that is, have a, a low CSF white cell count or no white cells, and low uh, in, uh, cytokine responses, particularly pro-inflammatory responses with uh, TNF alpha and interferon gamma, are more likely to develop iris, as are those whose immune systems reconstitute very rapidly, as judged by a rapid decline in HIV viral load and a rapidly increasing CD4 count. The management of cryptococcal iris has not been defined through any clinical trials, but is based on expert consensus. Usually it is very important to distinguish it from relapse or other infections, so we have to also check adherence to fungal and antiretroviral therapy. An LP is required to rule out other causes of headache and meningitis. Usually in the case of iris, no change to the antifungal therapy is required, and antiretroviral therapy should be continued. In minor cases, uh, patients will improve just with the passage of time and close observations. However, it is very important to, when doing the lumbar puncture, check the uh, CSF opening pressure, as this can often be raised and needs to be managed, possibly with multiple lumbar punctures. For patients with symptoms that are persistent or refractory to the, this kind of management, um, a moderate dose of steroids, either prednisolone or dexamethasone, can be used over two to six weeks at reducing doses. And there have been case reports of use of thalidomide and TNF-alpha inhibitors for cryptococcal iris. In terms of prevention of iris, in the case of paradoxical therapy, it is very important to use the best available sterilizing induction therapy to lower that antigen load, which, as Professor Harrison has told us about, consists of a combination of amphotericin B and flucytosine, or where this is not available, fluconazole and flucytosine oral therapy. It is important to check the CSF culture status at two weeks, before considering introducing antiretroviral therapy, and it is important to start ART promptly 
within four to six weeks of diagnosis um, and at a time that symptoms have resolved. In the case of unmasking iris, that is a new presentation of a subclinical infection, we have an excellent test, the serum cryptococcal antigen test, which can detect early dissemination of the infection from the lung into the bloodstream with a serum cryptococcal antigen test. And there are programs in many African countries to screen and treat patients with CD4 less than 100 before they start antiretroviral therapy. And if the CRAG in the blood is positive, if a patient has a headache, a lumbar puncture is done, otherwise, the patient receives preemptive treatment with fluconazole at the same time or just before starting antiretroviral therapy to prevent unmasking iris. So in summary, cryptococcal iris is due to an exaggerated immune response to cryptococcus after immune restoration. It can be both unmasking or paradoxical and the diagnosis is often challenging and involves ruling out other possibilities. It most commonly presents with a meningitis, and this can be accompanied by raised intracranial pressure or seizures. Steroids can be used for refractory therapy, and if the disease is properly managed, mortality should be low. And iris can be prevented by a combination of good antifungal induction therapy, access to early antiretroviral therapy, and CRAG screening programs. Thank you.